Well, I have to say, this must be one of the hardest <laughs> videos I've made since starting the YouTube channel. Third time lucky this, hopefully today. Um, it's just been the weather. I'm wanting a sort of a, a cloudy and overcast day in order to use the flash to show how it can benefit you on cloudy days. I just haven't had one. Again today, it's sunny, um, so I've come out really early before the sun gets up and gets really bright to come out and do this video. Um, the first part of this video is going to be using um, on-camera flash. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a perch and just use the flash on top of the camera um, to illuminate the birds. And because it's going to be a sunny day, what I'm going to do is just use the flash to enhance the bird and brighten up the detail and just give a little bit of catch light in the eye. And you can also use the flash um, as a bit of a, a light fill, just to fill in those shadows of where the bird may perch. And if the sun's over on this side, you may want to put the flash on a light stand if you have a trigger, um, just so you're going to illuminate the bird on the shadow side um, and it'll just enhance those colors on that side of the bird. Um, so I'm going to jump straight in and do the settings for that on the back of the camera and on the flash and take some photos then load those photos up uh, during the course of the video and at the end of that one session i'm then going to switch over to this setup which i've got behind me which is using a softbox to illuminate the perch and the bird that lands on the perch and to completely um, hide the background so i've set my camera up so that i can't see anything through the viewfinder pitch basically it's pitch black and it's only just just so you can't see the perch and then I've got my softbox set up which will then illuminate the perch and the bird um, so just it will basically isolate the bird and the perch in the image um, so that's what we're going to get on with now so without further ado let's crack on it's about time okay so we can look at the um, settings on the back of my camera here I have to excuse the glare um, so at the moment I'm set up perfectly to take a shot here of the perch. So if we just bring up an image here we can see that the image is perfectly set. I've got lovely soft bokeh in the background. The problem is I'm shooting at 200th of a second. So in order for me to up my shutter speed I'm going to introduce more light which means increasing my ISO. And what I also want to do is be able to photograph the bird and just to be able to get a bit of catch light in their eye, just that little glint of light reflection in the bird's eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change my settings up and I'm going to bring my shutter speed up to about two thousandth of a second and then take that same shot and we've just got a blank screen, nothing at all. So in order to increase the light in my image. So what I'm going to do is just bring up my ISO about a thousand and let's have a look. So now we've got a much better look but I'm using a thousand ISO. I really don't want to use a thousand ISO if I can help it. Um, I could bring that down the ISO a little bit. Take the shot again. Wait for a bit. Come on. So as you can see at the moment, I'm actually using manual focus. So we take the shot and we can see here that we've got the bird perfectly lit in here. A thousand ISO. So what I want to do is reduce my ISO as much as possible and illuminate the bird using the flash. Okie doke, so we can see the back of my flasher. So this is just a standard Canon 600 EXRT flash. Now you can use any flash um, as long as it's on camera flash and compatible with your camera. Um, Godox is a good and relatively cheap option um, and most of the settings on the back of the camera are very familiar throughout the ranges. So first of all I'm here in manual mode. Here we can see the zoom focal length of the lens of the flash and in here we can see the power. So at the moment the lens is 
on full power, which is one to one, and the zoom is at 200 millimeters. And the zoom of the flash works exactly like it does on a camera. 24 mil is a wide flash. The flash is going to spread over a large and wide area. At 200 mil, it's going to focus that flash directly and narrowly onto the subject. So I'm going to go in and change some of these settings on here. So first of all, I'm going to change my zoom to be a manual zoom. And I'm going to set it at about 105 millimeters because I'm not too far away from a subject here, probably about three or four meters. I then want to change the power of my flash. So I'm going to start off at about quarter power and just see what we get from that. I'm now going to bring my ISO down to 100 ISO and take the shot again. I'm going to take the shot. And I'll bring my camera down to the back of the camera so we can see. So what happens on the back of the camera when you're in live view like this is that the LCD will illuminate the screen. It's not a real representation of the image that you're going to get. So I've got my power set at quarter power, 105 millimeters. My ISO is 50 and my shutter speed is 1600th of a second and I'm shooting at f7.1 so what I want to do is just wait for a bird to land on that branch and take the shot so I haven't actually put any food out yet this is food that's been left previously so I just made a bit of an error there I actually forgot to put my flash on high speed sync and by default the camera changed the shutter speed to 250th of a second so I didn't notice that so my settings are now 1,600th of a second, f7.1, and my ISO is currently at 320, which is a much cleaner ISO. So what we're going to do is just have a look at what that looks like on the back of the screen. So we can see that the action, here's Bert coming out. So you see that's perfectly lit and what I'm hoping for is to capture the bird in action as it comes in and land. So yeah, so don't forget to change your shutter speed, um, sorry, your flash into a high speed sync mode. Otherwise you, the flash, uh, sorry, your shutter speed will default to the camera's maximum shutter speed for using flash when not in high speed sync mode. So I'll just show you what high speed sync mode looks like on the back of the camera for Canon. So just come in here so we can see here we just have this little icon which indicates that I'm using high speed sync. This means I can shoot um, anything up to eight thousandth of a second using the flash. Which we will try and do but it obviously will mean increasing my ISO but the flash helps to clean up the ISO and the grain in the images and it does actually work quite well um, one thing I don't want to do is use my flash on full power because I don't think it's, it's fair on the birds for me to blasting the birds with a full uh, power flash um, I just want to keep it quite subtle and at quite a distance just enough to freeze the action and illuminate the bird so what we're going to do is just wait now for a bird to come in and just hover above that stick.
Okay, so I just want to compare these two images. So as we can see on the left, we've got an image that hasn't used flash, and on the right, an image that has used flash. We can also see our settings. So on the left, we've used f5.6 and ISO 1000, and on the right, f6.3 and an ISO of 320. Now the image on the left is using those settings to try and match as closely as possible the image on the right to try and get the equivalent light without using flash. As we can see on the image on the right, it does seem a lot brighter and sharper, um, and a lot cleaner than the image on the left. There's obviously more grain on the image on the left. Um, the shadows within the feathers are a lot darker and the stick uh, is a little bit more contrasty than the stick on the right hand side um, and we can also see the catch light in the bird's eye on the right hand side now when using flash and obviously having the bird directly at you you're going to be getting the catch light in the bird's eye which is really nice now you will also get this on a bright sunny day if the bird is facing the sun you will get that catch light but obviously if it's a, a a grey day or it's overcast you're not going to get the catch light in the bird's eye um, like you do with the flash okay so I've got a few shots there I'm really quite happy with at the moment and um, the blue tits are still coming back and forth and just had a jay flying um, unfortunately it just stayed up in the tree so didn't come down to get any nuts but nice to see that all the same um, so what I'm going to do now is it's getting quite bright um, so the flash isn't going to be all that useful for a slow shutter speed um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my shutter speed to about anything from five to eight thousandth of a second now to really try and freeze that the action of that bird coming in as fast as I can and I'm going to be using my flash for that bring my ISO up so what I'm going to have to do is just adjust my camera settings and do a few test shots to make sure that my light and everything is ready and then wait for the birds to come in and land so I'll change those settings now and I'll show you what I've done on the back of the camera. So what I've done is I've gone to really high speed now so I've brought my shutter speed up to 6400th of a second at f5.6 and I've left my flash settings exactly as they were. I haven't changed anything, I'm still at quarter power but 135 millimeters at high speed sync. So I'm just changing my settings as the light changes with the sun coming out to and from the clouds and the only thing I'm setting changing is either going to be my f-stop or my ISO but I'm not bringing my ISO up any higher than about 400 so as you can see I'll put some pictures up now of images that I've already caught at 6400th of a second and how we can freeze the birds in action a lot of it is just hit and miss um, basically a lot of patience and a lot of luck to get the exact shots now I've got a few shots but there's nothing that really goes wow that's great um, just birds in flight at the moment okay so I've turned my flash off now and what we've done we've changed our settings um, in order to get the same shutter speed and the right light so in order to do that, I've had to increase my ISO to 1,250, which isn't a great deal. I mean, we are in bright sunlight today. Um, had it been a cloudy day, then our ISO would have been three times that, four times that quite easily. Um, so yeah, so I was shooting around 400 ISO. Now I'm shooting at about at 1250 so I can even increase my shutter speed actually we're going to bring that right up to 8000 now and we've still got a decent amount of light at 1250 ISO Just got this one coming into land here. Not too bad. It will be slightly out of focus because it's behind the branch. Okay, so 
I'm going to wrap this part of the first flash uh, video up now. Um, what I'm going to be doing is following on with this another day, but I'm going to keep it all into this video, is using flash with a softbox. And the idea behind that is that you will um, focus on the, the subject, um, maybe a fence post or a perch uh, that the bird will stand on. You then illuminate the bird and all the background and everything else will be just total darkness or very, very faint in the background. You can perhaps may sometimes just make it out depending on the lighting, uh, of what's lighting up the background, should I say, and what your background looks like. Um, so for today, it was on camera flash. Now there are other options that you can do. You can get a trigger like this, which is um, goes on top of the camera. And then I can actually put my flash on a fence post, in the tree, on a light stand, and just have it pointing at a different direction um, than the way I'm facing. So if you've got sunlight coming in from a particular way and you want to illuminate the shadows on the right hand side of the birds, then using a flash and putting it over and firing across onto the birds, because you've got the sun coming this way, um, and you put your flash over here, it will illuminate this side of the bird and highlighting or just lifting those shadows so basically you've got a nice overall um, lighting of the bird itself now today i'm in direct sunlight it's straight overhead uh, the forecast was for complete cloud dark clouds perhaps the odd shower it's the absolute opposite typical british weather um, so yeah so here are some pictures that i've taken i put the settings up of what i used to take the images for as well they were all done with flash and when they weren't I will make a note you would be able to see that they weren't taken with a flash as well so for today that's it and i will see you in part two Okay guys, well welcome back to the second part in this video. So what I'm going to do now is I'm setting up my softbox um, with the on-camera trigger so that my trigger on the camera will fire the softbox over a perch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a perch uh, with a bit of seed and feed underneath and then focus, focus on the perch itself. So bring down the exposure of the, the camera. So basically what I want to be able to see is just nothing on the back of the screen so that then the flash will illuminate the perch and the bird when the flash fires. So I'm going to set that up now and we will take some photos. Okay, so as you can see my setup here now and I have a softbox set up there using the Elinchrome 1 light, which is a 400 watt light with a softbox and diffuser. Now I've put a little green canopy on just so it doesn't scare the birds too much and it's not too much of a so anything that's going to put them off. Um, my camera set up, I have a trigger here on top of my camera which fires that flash there. Now my settings on the back of the camera I currently I'm shooting at f7 at 250th of a second at ISO 50. Now all I want to do, I don't, I'm not too fussed about freezing the bird in flight or anything like that because I just literally want the bird to sit on the perch. Once the bird sits on the perch then I will take the shot. Now I'm only looking at probably taking 10 images. I don't want to disrupt and disturb the 
there is too much. You can hear a woodpecker up behind me in the tree. Um, so I don't want to disturb the birds too much, take a few shots and move away and let them get on with the day. So the idea is, is wait for the bird to get on the perch for the ideal shot, take the shot and that's it. We don't want to be just firing off loads of shots um, all the time. So I need to shut up and let the birds relax. This video up now guys um, just to a really quick recap over the whole thing I know it was a bit sort of all over the place it's been quite difficult to actually put this together I need to sort of perhaps rethink it and do it again later on in the year um, so but for now um, on camera flash we set that up we illuminated our bird with the flash used our settings accordingly according to the light of the day um, and what we did on this occasion is, because it was a sunny day, we just used the flash to eliminate any shadows, enhance the colour and, and the definition of the bird, and just to put that catch light in the bird's eye. And I think overall, I think those images are really nice. I, I just really like the colour. It just seems to pop with a nice creamy background behind the bird. So I like those images and it's just something nice to try and something a little different. Um, we then moved on to the softbox and just highlighting the bird on a perch. Um, that worked quite well. What you've got to do is be very patient um, with this, just because the birds will be a bit uneasy about the softbox, this new thing in, it, in its environment. Um, like I put a canopy over the top of it just to blend it in a little bit, just so it doesn't stand out as much. But you do have this big white um, diffuser on the front and you can't do anything about that unfortunately um, because you can't change your colour because it will obviously cast that colour back onto the bird um, so yeah I, I really like that I've got to spend more time doing that um, it's absolutely fine with the blue tits they didn't seem to mind they kept on coming in and out and, and just got used to it after about an hour or so um, so yes yeah, so those images I'll, I'll put a couple more up now um, but overall don't be afraid to use flash it can enhance your images, like I say, using the on-camera flash or even off-camera flash by putting your flash on a, on a light stand on a, the opposite side to the sun will help uh, eliminate those shadows and give you better overall images. Um, as far as the birds are concerned, they really don't seem to mind at all. They, they couldn't care less that the flash was going off. Um, if they did mind and it went off, they wouldn't come back to, to the perch or the, or the food. Um, they, they just go elsewhere. So I think what I might do next is perhaps go off to one of the reserves, perhaps uh, later Mars, Mark Mir, uh, I'm not too sure yet. But I haven't been there for a couple of months, so it'd be nice to return now that uh, spring has come in and the birds are starting to be a little bit more active and foraging for food and, and bedding for the nests, etc. Um, and things will only increase as the rest of the year progresses. So. Looking forward to that and hopefully, may, I'm not too sure, we're going to go off to photograph the puffins. So I'm really looking forward to that one. But until next time, thanks guys and I'll catch you all later.